Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to the next part of the Artifact Set Review. Today it's time to talk about the blue spells, so let's go. Okay, so first off we have Diabolic Revelation. This card is, in my opinion, a non-starter in Limited. Sure, paying one mana to draw two cards is nice, but dealing two damage to all allies in all lanes is just way too much of a cost and super devastating in so many scenarios that the card is way too situational and uh, yeah has too big of a drawback. In Constructed, however, that's a, big, a bit of a different story. If your deck is set up to uh, manage it and yeah, get enough out of the cheap card draw, then this card is pretty Constructed playable. Like for example, the green-blue um, token combo deck is playing two to three copies of these usually and uh, who knows, maybe it will see play in other decks, but I'm not sure because it uh, is good in that deck due to its unique nature. But who knows, maybe other decks with Kana can abuse that card in some form and maybe want it as a one-off or something to make a lot of hounds and that sort of stuff. Next we have Strafing Run. And this card, I am not 100% sure how bad it is in Limited, but I think it is pretty bad and should usually not make your deck. Like, I always end up cutting it because I have cards that I think are better, uh, even though I'm not necessarily 100% sure how bad the card is. But um, the fact that it, that it never makes it in my deck over other cards that I am certain are better uh, means this is at least usually not good enough to make it in your deck. Uh, if you need a filler, Maybe this could be okay. It's definitely better if you have tower barrages and stuff because then you can like double tower barrage on the cheap with a strafing run and a tower barrage. But um, just on its own, I think it's just too narrow, only hitting creeps and so on. Yeah, not sure. Maybe it is a bit more playable and a bit better than I give it credit for and run it right now. But uh, so far, I barely ever play it. In Constructed, I don't think this is a consideration. It's just, yeah, probably a bit too uh, low impact and niche for what it does. And the fact that it cannot damage or finish off heroes is probably bigger than some people might think uh, at first glance. Next we have Ventriloquy. Uh, Ventriloquy is a pretty nice card in Limited. I usually uh, am pretty happy playing this even in multiples in uh, blue decks, since it is really good at protecting your uh, heroes early on, making sure they don't die if they land in front of an opposing hero. You can just use this to uh, redirect combat arrows. It also is pretty versatile. It can be used on your units as well as opposing, so you can also use it to gang up on uh, one enemy that you want to kill and make all its enemy neighbors fight it. This goes down in value if you have a lot of cunning plans and compels already or if you run Jemui and have battlefield control in the deck because you don't want too many of these one cost uh, effects that uh, cost your card and might not be worth a card on use every time. Um, but yeah, if you don't have Jemui in your deck, this is pretty good and potentially better than battlefield control. Um, Oh, uh, for Constructed, I don't think this is the type of effects you want in blue in Constructed. In next, we have Cunning Plan. This is a pretty amazing card in Limited. Another great way to make sure your um, hero doesn't die if it faces an opposing hero. You can use this on enemies as well. So you can either swap them with a, uh, with a creep or swap your hero with a creep, depending on what is available, because sometimes only you will have a creep and they won't, or the other way around, uh, making this pretty nice. Um, in Constructed, this might even have some use, simply due to the fact that, um, yeah, a two-cost yeah, board manipulation effect like this that replaces itself um, is definitely appealing and it could, could be worthwhile in Constructed. Next we have Lightning Strike. This card is usually pretty bad and limited, Except when your deck is very aggressive, like for example, I can see having a very aggressive red heavy blue deck or black heavy blue deck where you have like three red or three black heroes and uh, kind of a low curve uh, 
aggressively slanted deck with high attack red heroes or high attack black heroes and then you're just kind of trying to pressure down the opponent and then lightning strike suddenly becomes really good because it makes it uh, that much easier to finish one or two lanes off before the opponent can stabilize and take over. I am I think this is actually one of the better reasons to try uh, any any blue aggro decks uh, in addition to like the typical red black so like blue red or blue black uh, could very well um, be a decent option with a bunch of lightning strikes and constructed similar reasons if you have if you happen to uh, run a like aggressive deck like a black blue aggro deck with three black heroes and two blue something like that uh, just for like some of the good aggressive support parts in blue like dimensional portal and lightning strike then this is usually going to be a three of I think Next we have Whispers of Madness. This is a really weird and really bad card. Uh, stun an enemy this round and stun allied heroes in all lanes this round. Um, I mean, this is so situational. You can basically only use it in the last lane that you have a hero in, uh, which often is the third lane only. And second of all, the enemy you stun has to be an enemy that is not in front of a hero in order to uh, yeah, make it relevant that it doesn't take damage, but uh, it doesn't deal damage, but is taking damage to kill something without trading. And I guess you can also use this to keep the opponent from playing any spells, but so does it you. So there are a couple of uses and stuff. But yeah, I never wanted to put this in my deck. It's awkward and situational and yeah. And cards like this are not what you want in a draft deck. And in Constructed you have much better, more specialized cards to do similar things, so I wouldn't see why this card would ever do anything relevant. <laughs> Next, we have at any cost, the first powerful uh, sweeper in blue, uh, pretty cheap for 3, deals 6 damage to every unit, usually wiping the board, can sometimes keep some blue or green heroes alive or even red heroes. Black heroes mostly die to it, but yeah, if you are in green blue or in blue red, uh, there's a decent chance that uh, some or all of your heroes can survive if they haven't taken damage yet or are well equipped. And this is a pretty nice way to sweep the board. It's basically like the small brother or sister of Annihilation, except it has the upside of potentially uh, keeping some of your stuff alive and killing all of theirs. But it also can run into the opposite issue, of course, of not being sufficient and wiping all your stuff and only some of theirs. So there's definitely uh, a, lack, a discrepancy in power level between this and Annihilation for that matter, while Annihilation is always a clean sweep. But you can set this up nicely to be even better and cheaper than Annihilation. So when it's great, it's way better than Annihilation. When it's bad, it's awful. And Annihilation is always going to do the same thing very reliably. So yeah, in Limited, pretty good pickup. In Constructed, uh, one of the staples of controlling uh, more late gamey blue decks. Next we have Better Late Than Never. Initially I thought this card's pretty bad and not worth playing. Um, after thinking about it a bit more and reading some other opinions, I think the card's actually quite fine. It's not great. The fact that it's a spell helps with cards like Zeus and Ogre Magi. The fact that it's basically a uh, turn one play, but is cross lane makes it nicely flexible and might help you uh, gang up on something or face an opposing melee creep. But it's not; it's only like a bit better than something like crippling Hellbear in red, for example, that we talked about. But yeah, the spell synergies and the flexibility help a bunch, and also um, blue decks usually generate uh, quite a lot of bodies. So in something like blue green, this is decent, but not great. It is uh, on par with something like Relentless Zombie, it just has different up and down sides, basically. And in Constructed, this is never gonna make it. But yeah, in Limited, I, can, I, I occasionally end up with one of these in my deck as a filler, as one of the last cards. Next, we have Buying Time. This card's not very good. If two random cards in the opponent's hand plus two lock. First of all, two lock is not that much. Um, by the time you play this, they have like seven-ish cards, so hitting two of them at random 
is only gonna do so much, especially if they get them back. This is not Pym to Turak by any means for Magic players. So um, yeah, not uh, not really what you want to be doing, I think, neither in Limited nor in Constructed. The bigger version of this is decent in Limited, but this one is a trap. Better play something that has a, that impacts the board, because the, the board matters so much more than the hand in this game compared to um, some other games like Magic, my experience. Next we have Compel. This is another pretty uh, decent card. It is expensive for what it does, given that Battlefield Control costs one, but the fact that it cycles and replaces itself and that often on turn one it's going to be your only play anyway, um, it is better than it seems. It becomes worse in the later turns because they are this clunky, but in the early game to save your hero or gang up on an opposing hero in your lane to kill them, uh, this does a great job and it does so for free, which is amazing. Later on it can be a bit clunky, but in limited I still usually play all the copies that I have and I'm pretty happy about it. In Constructed, not sure how playable this is, but once again I can see it being a reasonable consideration in certain decks. Um, next we have Rolling Storm, another card that is mind-bogglingly bad to, in my opinion. It deals 2 damage to all towers and all lanes, so it also deals 2 damage to yourself. And 2 damage is really not that much, so... Sorry. Dealing 2 damage to each enemy tower is so marginal that it just isn't worth the investment of a card. And then that it even has a downside on top of it is just like... This is so much worse than Lightning Strike, I don't even know uh, how to describe it. The card is just like terrible in both formats. And next we have Tower Barrage. Um, basically the better strafing run. Three, power, uh, three mana deal two damage to each enemy, including heroes. The thing is, it is a bit clunky at three and it can be a bit low impact, but after melee creeps hit each other once, this is a nice way to just kind of finish off all their melee creeps and probably the hero that barely traded. So um, I'm usually fine playing multiples of these. The third one becomes a bit much at times, but two is usually fine limited. And yeah, you can try and pair this with strafing run to make it a bit uh, more powerful, but not sure if that doesn't like dilute your deck too much with these situational deal twos. In Constructed, I don't think this is usually going to see play because there are more powerful cards like at any cost to uh, yeah, fill your sweeper needs. Next we have Wrath of Gold. Um, immediately evokes memories of Wrath of God in Magic for Magic players. I even read the card as Wrath of God for a while until I realized it was Wrath of Gold, which makes a lot more sense given what the card does. You spend all your gold and for each gold you spend your deal 4 damage to a random ally or enemy. So this is um, pretty devastating because since it you have to make sure that you have enough gold to kill everything because otherwise it might be you that is being wiped out and your opponent has some stuff left. Second of all, spending your gold on this is not great. Sure, you get gold back from wiping the board and stuff, but so does the opponent, so you still end up at a gold discrepancy. This is a high variance worse at any cost, and I would not play this, this at any cost, really, in limited or constructed. It is a pretty bad card. Next, we have end one for me. Um, I think in limited, this is a bit clunky and situational, uh, so I'm usually don't play this. Um, it can be randomly powerful and it could be fine to play one as a filler in slower decks, a sort of like an advantage thing. But um, yeah, in Constructed this is a bit more playable because the items are higher power and more finely selected. You can uh, very easily steal a Blink Dagger with this, for example, sometimes even a Horn of the Alpha or a Legerim Hourglass, that sort of stuff. So. In Constructed, you can sometimes see this in small numbers as one or two offs in some blue controlling decks. Like Sivka, I think, posted a list um, yesterday that had one or two copies in a blue-red control deck, for example. Next, we have Arcane Assault. Um, Arcane Assault, in Limited, I'm not a big fan of it usually. I get that 
it gets you initiative, which can be nice by setting up like an Eclipse or a Thunder God's Wrath and stuff like that. But the card is so expensive, 4 mana is so much for just cycling and dealing 2 damage to the tower, which is almost non-consequential, that I usually end up cutting it as one of my, of my last cards. But it is fine as a filler, especially if you have things you can set up with the initiative. In Constructed, this becomes more relevant, because the fight for initiative is harder and also more impactful than in Limited, uh, with everyone having these big power plays they want to make and trying to stop each other from doing that, and then Arcane Assault becomes much better and you see a lot more copies of these in Constructed for that matter. Even though the effect other than get initiative is uh, pretty negligible, this card basically is just get initiative, draw a card. It's a card economy free way to get initiative for 4 mana. That's all it really does. Next we have Dimensional Portal. This card is a powerhouse, one of the best blue um, cards in limited, just 4 mana, get 3 melee creeps is so good, especially if you pair it with cards like uh, Assault Ladders, Oath, and Disciple of Nevermore in black, or with Arm the Rebellion, Mist of Avernus, Emissary of the Quorum, and that sort of stuff in green. That's the two colors it really shines with. In red, it's just good on its own still, but it's not at its full potential. And in Constructed, this is also a powerhouse in more mid rangey and proactive blue decks. Um, okay, next we have Fog of War. This is basically a higher variance um, effect that is similar to Divine Intervention in green, except that it can prevent damage on your tower, but it is also really high variance and not super reliable. Um, so it is significantly worse than Divine Intervention uh, if you consider all aspects, even though it has some minor downsides like being cheaper and preventing tower damage. So yeah, would not want this in my deck. If you need a 40s card and this is uh, one of your options, it could be your best option because there are definitely worse cards to run, but it's not something that I want in my deck if I can avoid it. And in Constructed, this is not playable. There are so many better and more reliable effects to play, like the sweepers and stuff. Next we have Foresight, one of the fewer direct card advantage, card draw type cards in the game. Just 4 mana, draw 2. Um, pretty good in both formats. In Limited, you don't want to go overboard on these because they can be a bit slow and clunky. So if your deck is very defensive and uh, good at stabilizing then this becomes better. If you have Crystal Maiden in your deck, it becomes much better. But um, in Constructed, this is a staple in uh, especially controlling decks, and you usually run three copies. In Limited, uh, I usually try to stick to one or two unless I have Maiden, then I play as many as I can get, basically. Next we have Self-Sabotage. Uh, yeah, modify two random cards in the opponent's hand with Pulse deals 6 damage to a random allied tower in any lane. This card is so bad, once again, I don't know how to say it. Um, first of all, they might never use the cards because they don't need them. Then it didn't do anything. Second of all, if they use the card, who cares? It's like 6 damage to a random tower. It might hit a tower that doesn't even matter. And if you get into a situation where, um, where it matters, like on... Where it, could kill the, where it could kill them, they're just not going to play the card. Sure, then you got um, them to effectively discard a card. But this card is so um, high variance and gives the opponent all the control of what it's going to do. And it's always going to do the worst for you and the best for them of the options they have. And not the best for you and the worst for them. This is... Similar to basically Punisher type cards in Magic and other card games like Eternal, where you present the opponent with two effects and let the, and they get to choose which effect they want, and they can always choose the one that they can manage the most and is the le the least problematic to them, which is the opposite of what you what you want to do. You don't want to give your opponent choices. You want to take away as many choices as possible, so they uh, are locked into what's going to happen, and then you can. Uh, work with that and make sure that you beat beat them 
rather than playing cards that give the control back to them. Also, the effect is just not worth the investment of a card or mana, and it's just, yeah. I had this card played against me so many times, and it never did anything relevant other than make my opponent waste a turn and discard a card. Um, this card is horrible. Don't play it in any form. Next, we have Annihilation. Talked about this earlier, would at any cost. This is the big version. It just destroys everything in one lane. Very powerful and limited. You can just make the opponent overextend, drop one blue hero in, blow up the whole lane, maybe even have a hero ready to deploy next turn and they don't. Deploy a hero first and take over the lane. Super powerful. And in Constructor, this is a 3 off in all the late game blue, blue decks, really. It's a very powerful card and the most expensive uh, non-hero blue card in the game. Next we have Calder Reserves, another card that I initially thought was pretty weak, but uh, thinking about it a bit more and playing it with it a bit more, it's much better than I thought. Once again, cross lane impact is good, multiple bodies for one card is good. It compares poorly to Dimensional Portal, which is part of why I thought it was so bad, but Dimensional Portal is extremely good, and if you are less good than Portal, you might still be a pretty solid card, especially if you add the uh, cross lane impact because by the time you can play this 6-7 mana, um, you might already have a lane where you don't need any impact anymore because you're either losing it or you're already winning it enough. And then you can use that mana to impact other lanes. And then the fact that this is a bit overcast, it doesn't matter as much. It blocks well, it goes wide well, works well with the cards that uh, work well with Dimensional Portal that I mentioned earlier. So it just gives you more ways to go wide. And in Constructed, this is... Um, yeah, not what you want. It's a bit too overcast and underpowered for constructed purposes, and there are more dedicated, powerful effects usually that you uh, can get for cards if you can choose what to put in your deck. Next, we have Friendly Fire. This card ranges from super devastating and awesome to awkward and kinda useless. Um, the problem is, it depends what color you're facing. If you play against green-blue, for example, this is a lot of time very bad. Both colors have low attack and high health in comparison. So pitting heroes against each other is going to be super hard. At best, you're going to kill one hero. It's super hard to kill both. This is best against, say, black plus another color, because a lot of the time you can make it so that both heroes die or even make two black heroes trade with each other. Um, also works against... Uh, black red basically as soon as black is involved this works really well and when red is involved it works fine as well but if neither are involved this card is very problematic but it is still a pretty strong card and a high pick um, there are also sometimes creeps that you can use it with that are big and powerful and so on but um, the card is still like I said pretty good and powerful but be aware that it can also be a bit lackluster and hard to use. Um, but it is an uncommon, so you really shouldn't have a ton of these in your deck. But if you get the chance to have a ton of these, try to not do it. Like, one one is a good number, not sure if the second is even what you would want, uh, due to the reasons that I mentioned. So um, keep that in mind. And I think in Constructed, you usually have more powerful signature cards from heroes in that casting cost. And less situational stuff, so this is not going to make it. Next we have Lost in Time, the big buying time that I mentioned. Um, this is actually quite good in Limited, unlike buying time. The thing here is, you got to use it properly. You want to use this as late as possible, when the opponent has like 3 to 5 cards in their hand, preferably no items, and then you just jam this, lock up the rest of their hand, and basically uh, they effectively discard their hand and you can just have free reign with your resources and it puts you so far ahead for the next two or three turns that you should be able to take the game uh, based on that advantage. Don't just slam it on turn six when they have like a full grip. It's not going to do anything meaningful. In Constructed, I don't see this being something that you want. Six cost card, no board impact and kind of situational 
but I don't know, maybe it can make it in some slower decks as a way to lock up the late game, the top end, the way I described. Uh, it's not not uh, that underpowered that it couldn't be a consideration in Constructed, I think, although it's unlikely. Next we have Remote Detonation, a card that is worse than I initially thought. It has quite a situation, a uh, little nature to it, and it deals 5 damage to each enemy across from an empty combat position. So um, basically if you're behind and the opponent went pretty wide in a lane on you, this is amazing to catch up because it kills most of the things um, that went wide usually. But if you're kind of on parity or even have a slightly wider lane, then this is not going to do anything for you. So it is a bit situational and you have a lot of uh, powerful 6 cost sweeper effects and cards like Thunderstorm that are much better. But this can be decent as one of the last few cards in your deck, especially when you're going a bit later and having a bit of a slow start. This is a great way to catch up from behind. Uh, in Constructed, I think there are too many better uh, ways to control the board, sweep the board, that this is going to see any play. Next we have Thunderstorm that I just mentioned. It's basically a slightly better remote detonation. It only deals 4 damage, but it deals 4 damage to each enemy, no matter what is in front of them, which is really powerful. Um, this is a great sweeper in Limited, and in Constructed it usually is outshined by cards like At Any Cost and Annihilation that are more uh, yeah, powerful, reliable, and uh, dedicated to what they do. But in Limited this is great. Multiple copies can get clunky, but other than that the card is uh, really powerful and can really turn around a lane. And last but not least we have Bolt of Damocles. In Limited this is surprisingly good. When I first saw it, uh, when I was spoiled, I was like, this looks like a weird card and probably is not going to be that good. But little did I know about the game, obviously. So by now having played the game a bunch and played with this card, this is a nice finisher, a nice way to um, yeah, kill that second lane that they stabilized and keep you from taking and then you just bolt of Damocles and finish it and it's much much better than lightning strike for that purpose because it goes into slower decks and the range of health the tower can have so you can finish it is pretty wide. <coughs> the opponent usually the opponent uh, stabilizes a lane uh, around 20 often below 20 health, so getting a, a second lane, like the lane they haven't abandoned, to 20 or below is not that hard and there's not a lot of healing on towers, making this card a, a pretty safe bet to win the game on turn 10 in that lane, to win the lane in that, uh, on turn 10, or rather on turn 8. Um, so yeah, uh, this often made it in my late gamey blue decks like blue-green and stuff like that to just fin finish off a tower and it has been performing pretty well. So I'm not uh, unhappy to have one of these as a finisher in my blue uh, late game decks. Unless I already have a lot of top end then I might cut it to not become too clunky. In Constructed there's probably better ways to f end the game or, or like control the game in a way that you can just end the game somehow by being way ahead and just kind of finishing them with whatever you have, the same way Control does in every game. So in Constructed I don't see too much uh, yeah, hope or use for this. Okay, that's all the blue spells. There was a lot of uh, cards. Hope you guys sticked with me to the end. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification icon to not miss out on the rest of the series. You can also find me on social media and live streaming on Twitch over here. Drop me a like, a follow, and uh, yeah, get the latest scoop on all things card games that I'm involved with and my content and so on. Also, if you want to support uh, the content for free, please consider whitelisting YouTube and turning off your ad block to help the channel uh, with ads. That would be amazing. Uh, okay, tomorrow I will be back if I can manage with the black spells. If I can't manage tomorrow I'll be back the beginning of next week because I will be gone for Magic Grand Prix over the weekend. I will be playing the Modern Team Unified Grand Prix in Liverpool uh, with two friends. Uh, fingers crossed for us. 
uh, we're gonna try and cash and qualify for the Pro Tour together. That would be pretty awesome. I haven't played a Grand Prix in like three years, so really excited about slinging some paper cards again in the other Richard Garfield game. And yeah, I'll be back with the Black Spells. I'll probably manage to get the Black Spells out tomorrow before I have to fly off, but then we will continue the series on uh, Monday or Tuesday when I'm back. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.